Okay, finally getting this list out. I mean, I did get the list out earlier this year. It still feels like I'm way behind. <sighs> anyway. Hey, remember 2017? Not a good year for mainstream music, right? Well, actually, I'm not sure how I judge whether a year is good or not. Right when the year's over, I'm like, did I mostly enjoy the music this year? And this year, the answer to that is definitely no. But the further in the past a year gets, the more I tend to ignore all the shitty parts and just judge it by how good the best stuff was. And I gotta admit, the stuff I liked in 2017, I really liked. Granted, that could be because the rest of the year was so samey sounding that the good stuff stood out way more. Or maybe it was just how surprising this year was. No one did what I expected them to do. Acts I hated turned out great. Acts I at least respected turned to complete dog shit. Maybe I'm projecting, but it sure seems like there was an upheaval. But I will say this, I had extreme difficulty narrowing my favorites down to 10 this year. That hasn't happened in a while, so you know what? Hey, maybe things aren't so bad. So let's get to it. We're counting down. Yeah. I just wanna know somebody like me. The top 10 best hit songs of 2017. When you're alone with me, all you have to do is Number 10. <laughs> we're uh we're gonna start off this list on a curveball. <laughs> Boy, this is um didn't expect this guy to ever be on a list of mine. <laughs> now they always say congratulations Work so hard, forgot how to vacation It's not that I dislike Post Malone, it's that I don't get Post Malone. And I think I don't get Post Malone because I don't smoke pot. Just not a pot guy. I mean, like, lighting something on fire and sticking it in my mouth to make myself stupider? I mean, no, never. It is not for me. I am anti-drugs. Or, I don't know, maybe I don't like him because he sucks. Maybe he just sucks. He makes these droning, monotonous songs. He's like a rap version of the guy from Stain. Like, this guy claims he's the white Allen Iverson. That's one of the harshest things against white people I've ever heard. Iverson was one of the most talented and volatile basketball players in history. And if you add whiteness to that, you get... The love child of Jay and Silent Bob? Christ, I'm offended on behalf of white people. That's almost hate speech. But I don't know, man. I heard this song and it just hit me. My mama calls, see you on TV. And I'm not sure why. I mean, it's yet another rapper bragging about his success. And Post Malone has only been around for like a year or so, so that could all be gone tomorrow. Maybe he's celebrating a little early, but I don't know. I feel it. Yeah, we made it. That was never friendly. And when most rappers celebrate, you know, they go to strip clubs and they chug Patron. And I, I can't relate to that. But when I look at the empire I built as a low to mid-level YouTube celebrity, and I look at my splendorous apartment, my fabulous pre-owned Nissan Altima, like, and I hear this song, I think, yeah. Now they always say congratulations. congratulations. This song is what that success feels like. It's not excess or partying, it's just the relaxed satisfaction of Post Malone reflecting on all the work he's done. Though so I will say, it does sound weird for Post Malone to be talking about how much work he does, seeing as he looks like he just got fired from Burger King for doing whippets at work. Even Quavo seems to want to be done with his guest verse as quickly as possible. I have never related to a rap song more in my life. Yeah, I made it. Number nine. Once again, Katy Perry. What is she doing? What is she doing? I don't think anyone would deny this was a bad year for Katy Perry. Nothing seemed to go her way. Her album bombed. She did whatever the hell this is. Somehow the woman who was the hottest pop star in the world at the start of the decade became unfathomably mom lame. I blame the haircut. And you could see it coming. Like there are superstars who have a cult of personality, who will be famous no matter what happens, whose fans will follow them around no matter what, you know, like Gaga or Beyonce. But acts like Katy Perry, 
who don't really have personalities of their own, they're famous as long as they have the tunes to back it up and not one second longer. Even I, the reluctant Katy Perry defender, have to admit that I never really cared about her as a person. Or at least I didn't until 2017, when the Katy Perry persona developed an intriguing new layer. Deep and thorough self-loathing. It's been obvious for a while that Katy Perry doesn't want to make I Kissed a Girl or California Girls anymore. She just wants to inspire little kids. She wants to make firework and roar. But a Katy Perry album needs a big opening single, so this is basically her attempt to make California Girls with a social conscience. How do you even do that? Well, apparently the only way to write a conscious Katy Perry song is to make it about how Katy Perry songs are garbage and making the world worse. It's basically self-defeating, and I'm not comfortable with it for that reason. It's like a book called Don't Read This Book. So put your rose-colored glasses on. It was also the second time in one year that Skip Marley dragged a clueless white celebrity into corporate-approved wokeness. Yeah. In fact, as someone who really loves stupid pop songs, I'm a little insulted. Stupid pop music is the only thing that keeps me going in our current whirlwind of bad news. We need happy, stupid songs like Katy Perry used to make. Okay, maybe we don't. Look, my first instinct was to dismiss this song, but as the year went on and on, and Katy Perry kept stumbling and looking sadder and sadder with each terrible flop single and embarrassing public appearance, Chained to the Rhythm kept sounding just darker and sadder. And there were plenty of songs about misery and sadness this year, some of which deserve to be on this list way more than Chained to the Rhythm. But I don't know, coding the dread of 2017 and Katy Perry frosting just made it seem even darker than anything I heard this year. And to be clear, yes, all of that is totally what this song is about, I'm not projecting. You want to know how Katy Perry finished the year? As Marie Antoinette. Yeah, stay tuned for her next single, I'M AWFUL, PLEASE BEHEAD ME. Number 8. I know, I know, I'm sick of Drake too. Sick of putting him on his list. He hasn't done anything new in years, he's just- Hold on, hold on, fuck that. Fuck that. I'm sorry, uh, we'll wait. Hold on, I got to start this motherfucking record over again. Wait a minute, fuck that shit. Hey, y'all get some more drinks going on, I sound a whole lot better. Are we done? I can get back to it? Okay. Well, anyway, Drake is treading water. He dropped another mixtape this year. I'll be straight with you, I didn't listen to it. I mean, I tried, I tried to push through it, but it's, it's 80 minutes long. I listened to the album he released before this, that's also 80 minutes long. Jesus Christ, that's two and a half punishing hours of Drake. I don't know if Drake has anyone who wants to spend two and a half hours with him in real life, let alone on his mixtapes. But I don't know, like no matter how many times I hear him do it, Drake failing at his relationships never stops being compelling to me. Even Hotline Bling, that most tunnel-visioned, self-centered, head-up-his-ass song in his repertoire has grown on me. And I just like the vibe here, it's, it's like an alternate version of Hold On, We're Going Home. Granted, it doesn't have as good a beat or melody, but the lyrics are better. Passion Fruit I like specifically because I have also had long distance relationships and passionate from miles away sounds very familiar to me. Especially the implied failure to live up to that passion in person. Passionate from miles away with the things you say Yeah, it turns out sexting is not a relationship. And speaking as a dude who is also in perpetual meltdown mode, yeah, what can I say, I relate. I totally see myself in Drake's moody failures. Although, I'm not as bad as Drake. Honestly, I don't know why anyone dates Drake anymore. It's like dating Taylor Swift, you have to know what you're gonna get. 
Oh, he's distant, drunk all the time, and having difficulty connecting? Surprise! No, 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 no. Number seven. Performing her new song, Water Under the Bridge, once again, Adele! Yes, Adele. It is time again to praise Adele. God knows she needs it. Adele needs more praise. Why don't we all give Adele more praise and awards and shit for being so great? Isn't she just great? God, I'm more predictable than the Grammys. If you're gonna let me down, let me down gently, don't pretend. You don't want me, I love you, wanna under the breeze. Look, the album's been out for more than two years now. You know what it's about. It's about reminiscing and trying to rekindle old flames that probably should remain out. It plays out a billion different ways over the course of the album. There was desperate pleading, there was resignation, there was... I think this one was sarcasm. But I feel like Water Under the Bridge is a markedly different Adele than one I've ever heard anywhere else. I mean, she's still got that booming voice, but she's looser, she's more relaxed, she's, dare I say it, more fun. I mean, I've heard dance remixes of Adele that remind me of Whitney Houston. I feel like there's like a tiny hint of that in that Like I hear that and I think she could totally be a dance diva if she wanted to. I mean that'd be amazing. Imagine it. And from what I understand, it's like one of the few songs that she's put out in the last couple albums that's not about an ex at all. I just kind of assumed it was because that's what the entire album sounds like, but this is actually a song about her future husband. Apparently, she was anticipating that he'd become a dick and brutally dump her and then she'd have material for another few albums. And that just kind of never happened. This guy turned out to be the real deal. Well, that's just heartwarming, right? And maybe that's why she sounds like she's having fun for once. Like, even though it's mostly a song about fear that she's gonna get destroyed like usual, I mean, you can see the rays of hope and sunshine peeking through. And God, did we need some sunshine this year. So, thank you, Adele. Number six. And since then, of course, more and more powerful men have been held to account. They've been accused of some kind of harassing or assaulting behavior. This has been um, a difficult year to be a fan of male celebrities or hear news about them or just know they exist because in the back of your mind you know you just know <laughs> me personally i've been dealing with it by binge watching as much tv and movies by dudes i like while i still have time before finding out something about them that ruins it astonishingly this wave of accusations has yet to really touch the record industry so you can still listen to the radio guilt free but there have been a couple here and there. And of course, the big one happened like a year or two before the current wave of sex crime news. Kesha and Dr. Luke going head to head in a legal battle. The pop star claiming years of abuse at the hands of her producer. <sighs> this is a rough one to try and talk about. Kesha got famous playing a tacky, sloppy, drunken party girl. And she played it so well that I was certain, I mean dead certain, that it had to be just who she really was. But slowly we all kind of realized that Kesha had to have more going on. Like there were stories circulating about her having like perfect SATs, and there was just like a general lack of embarrassing news about her that you'd have expected. And then the rape accusations came out, and that was a whole thing that derailed her career for years while she tried to get out of her contract. You brought the flames and you put me through hell. And on top of every other unfair thing about this story, I was certain that even after she got out of that contract, her career would be over. Like, she built an image, and this completely destroyed it. You can't be a party girl after that. And you said that I was done. But the amazing thing was she pulled it off by directly addressing it. 
Her song is basically a letter to the man who assaulted her, and it is powerful. I hope you're somewhere praying, praying. I hope your soul is changing. I mean, it is a song about forgiveness. But like, the really condescending forgiveness that Southerners like to use to remind you that you're a loathsome piece of shit. It's called praying because it is a truly deep spiritual cleansing. In the sense that, you know, being burned alive is. When I'm finished, they won't even know your name. Kesha says in this song that she wants the best for Dr. Luke. And I believe it. Because what she means by that is that she wants him to be a completely different person than the piece of human garbage that he is. The only reason that it's this low on the list is because it's such an intense song that I can only listen to it every so often. It's a lot. Still, I mean, what a build-up, what a payoff. By the end of it, I am sure that Kesha has ascended into godhood. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yeah.